people often ask me how I do my family tree and I think that's a difficult question to answer I mean has anybody ever finished their family tree I want I'm particularly talking here to my brick wall my three times great grandfather William Holtzell he said his father was called John well I can't find him I can't find a baptism anywhere so he's one of my dead ends so in that sense I definitely haven't finished my family tree but a lot of us do get to that point where we have researched enough that we have got something to make into a family tree uh, to create a family tree so many of us then think well let's get a piece of paper out and let's get drawing let's show everybody else what we found a lot of us are also stuck at home at the moment if we're family historians we particularly know that we cannot do things like going to the archives we can certainly do a lot of research on the internet and that kind of thing but the archives and the old documents are not available at the moment so I'm sure I am not the only person who has been um, editing my family tree, reviewing my family tree, trying to add a few missing dates and that kind of thing until you do get to a point where you feel like you have got your line a bit further. So I thought why not seize on this idea of not being able to really go anywhere and do anything and make a video that was a little bit more creative. I thought why not combine two of the things that I love the most, art and family history, and do a video about how to draw a family tree. There are all sorts of approaches to drawing a family tree. There are really really simple ones. There are those interesting kind of circular ones, as we can see in this example that was put together in the 18th century, I think, to show Jane Austen's ancestors. And if you're technically minded, there are endless numbers of and different varieties of uh, computer software that will draw a family tree if you only put the information into the program. So for today's project I thought I would look instead at the more creative approach. I thought let's have a look at actually drawing the family tree, demystifying it a bit and making it into something hopefully a little bit prettier than you might get anywhere else but also something that is very personal to you that you can totally customise to represent your own family and to maybe even make something that you could either put on your own wall or if you're feeling particularly um, creative and there's a special occasion coming up you might even want to give it to somebody as a, a present of some kind share it around the family so here's how we're going to do it so what will you need first some paper whatever size you like i am using a3 here just because it's a bit easier to demonstrate you're going to also need some pencils any basic pencil will do you don't have to use them but they can be really good if you want to sketch the tree and correct it as you go before you actually decide on your final design. Some coloured pencils and wax crayons or whatever else you want to use to colour. I'm going to go for coloured pencils here because I want to show you the nice blended effect that you can get. And finally a dark biro fine liner, some kind of handwriting pen simply to edge it nicely when you finish the final tree design. Before you actually start your tree one really good thing you can do is to look up different kinds of leaves and different shapes and trace an outline 
of whatever kind of leaf you can find just as a little bit of inspiration also it gives you some ideas about how you might want to represent people in your family tree because these are around about three to four centimeters in width and height you don't really want them to be any smaller than that because the crucial thing is that you want to be able to write somebody's name in them on the outer edges of your tree you're probably going to have about 16 of these on an A3 paper if you're using A3 so you you sort of got to weigh up what kind of size you think will be best When you get to this point, the important thing is to remember that your family tree is going to go out in quite a few different directions. So you don't want these branches to be too close to the ground because they're going to spread out. And then you just carry on like this, splitting each branch roughly into two twigs on the end. With these lower ones it can be quite useful just to make sure that they don't go too near the ground. So be creative. Trees can bend so you can do exactly the same with your family tree drawing. So you see here we've got the main trunk split into two. It then goes to four then to 8 and then here finally we're going to go to 16 and you do this for each branch of the tree or if you've got the space you could even split it again and go to 32 it just depends how you want to do your tree or indeed how many ancestors you know about it might be that one of your branches comes to a dead end so you just don't go any further with that and you might have another branch that goes much much further back in time so be creative now taking my leaf templates what i've decided to do which is a really useful tip you can try if you want to trace things is i've scribbled in a soft pencil on the back of the page on the other side of the leaf that i'm using because when I then go over the leaf on the actual drawing itself, which I'm going to do here, what you end up with is an imprint which is caused by the graphite. So you can just then trace over it properly once on the template side like this and then you get an imprint there so then you just Go over it like that, approximately at the point where the tree joins up and um, creates two separate branches there. So that is where you want to put your uh, ancestor on that particular branch because that represents where the tree divides up. So when you're finished, what you end up with is a tree that looks a little bit like this. Very leafy.
we're on to the fun bit. We're going to colour it in. And because these are raspberry leaves, technically speaking, raspberry leaves are completely green. Just for a bit of extra interest, I'm going to start by edging these with pink. Because what I'm going to do as I go is to layer up the colours and then that will create, hopefully, a slightly more interesting effect. And this is something you can try as well. If you want to get really creative, you can actually put a bit of shading on the trunk of the tree. The important thing with shading, obviously, is that you pick a side that's in the light and a side that's in the dark and then just shade it in accordingly. So this is the shade side of the tree. So I'm making sure that all the left hand sides of the branches are a bit darker. And then we'll start to work on the rest of it as I go. And then as you go, why not start adding the names of the people who are your direct ancestors? Because after all, that's what each leaf represents, one person. One completed raspberry leaf family tree. Every single family is a little bit different. This family, my grand's, is quite different from this one, my granddad's. And different again from my granddad's on my mum's side. This is my maternal family, the six. This I've put together to show you how, if you really want to, if you know just a little bit more about your ancestors and maybe the kind of job they did, you can make it really personal. And then because this family were gamekeepers, I thought why not finish off with a little nod to the kind of creature that they would have encountered in their day-to-day -day job. So there we have the Finnish family tree with our little pheasant there at the bottom who is hopefully looking out for poachers just as much as my gamekeeping ancestors were of course with a view to saving his own life. So there you are. Maybe a morning or an afternoon's work and you can come up with something very creative, uh, totally different that represents your family and maybe something that you can share around amongst your own relatives and get them talking about family history. You don't know what it might lead to. And this is a bit more of an unusual video than I've done before but nevertheless I hope it shows you that there are some really interesting ways that you can look at your ancestors and the story of their lives.